We're at the University of Cambridge. The university's complicity extends decades back when Arthur Balfour first graduated from here. He's one of the foundational elements of Zionism today. Across the board from investment, from relations, research funds and links to Israeli institutions, the university has been very much complicit in the genocide in Gaza. As of now, the university has not entirely disclosed its investment. However, through personal efforts, some of our activists here were able to push their colleges to disclose their investments. Through, for example, Christ College, King's College, Trinity College, they, the total investments they have is 17 million pounds uh, in companies like BAE, Caterpillar, Elbit Technologies, all of which manufacture the engines, the bombs, the missiles that get dropped on Gazan children. Not just that, the design of such bombs, the design of such engines. This happens in our institutes of manufacturing. This happens in our institutes of engineering. Yesterday, Trinity announced that they will drop all their investments in weapons manufacturing companies. It's big, it's, it's massive, and only disclosure got the ICJP, so that's the International uh, Court of Justice for Palestinians, to draft a legal notice for Trinity on its potential complicity in genocide. We requested that information, that information was made public, and then the pressure came on. The Sunni encampment here was done in coordination with Oxford. We launched on the same day. We also took a lot of tips from students in the University of Columbia. We were very much inspired by the Columbia encampment. We figured out like all of these rallies, these demonstrations, these protests are not being responded to. We thought we should take this one step further. Our first demand to the whole university is disclosure, and we can see what a disclosure can do. While some colleges have disclosed their financial ties, the university as a whole has not. After disclosing their investments, we demand that the university divests from any companies or institutions that are complicit in genocides. The third demand is to reinvest that money into Palestinian livelihood, money that we pay the university in tuition fees that gets used to kill people. We want that to get used to help people. A hundred percent of Gaza universities have been destroyed. There is literally no university in Gaza right now standing. So we demand that our university invests in higher education in Gaza, invest in ethical and sustainable research projects. And our fourth demand is the protection and amnesty of students who are currently taking part of this. And to support Palestinian students who are directly affected by the war. We have a lot of students here who lost their parents, who lost their friends who lost their livelihood, at least introduce a scholarship for Palestinian students. The local community has been incredible. The staff and the union has been amazing. They've been writing open letters, they've been writing press releases, asking us if we need any help with tutoring, any help with teachings. It's been really beautiful. If you want to contribute materially to the camp, we do have a wish list. We need like waterproof tops to cover the floor, to cover the ground and to cover the tent. Yesterday we made a call out for rechargeable batteries. But I think more importantly, we would love support directed at the university. Write an email right now to the pro vice chancellors of the university. Tell them who you are, tell them that you support our action. Tell them to divest and to reinvest and to disclose and to protect the students. We organize a lot of rallies and demonstrations. We would love for people to show up for that. For the teach-ins, we also organize to like exert this public pressure on the University of Cambridge. And of course, if you want to camp with us, you're very welcome to. We do try to emulate this Arab Palestinian tradition of like feeding others, of welcoming others. We take inspiration from the students who protested Vietnam, the students who protested South Africa. Um, and if they can bring about change in the very horrible and dark times that they were in, we can definitely bring about change. And this is unprecedented because this is the first time it's united across the globe. Our message to the people of Gaza is that we will not leave you behind. I know that it is very, very dark times, but we will never, never forget you. We will put our bodies on the line, our minds on the line, our hearts on the line for you. Hopefully many of us will, will help one day rebuild Gaza and make it the uh, beautiful city that it was before and for the whole of Palestine to be liberated.